Indians, they are the much chinese dance in honor of Saint Anthony. My role is the uh, what they call is the abuelo, which is the leader of the uh, the Matachines. This particular dance came in from Spain. Los Matachinas origins can be traced to the time when the Moors were expelled from Spain. The struggle against the Moors started in 711 AD and continued for 780 years. In 1492, the last Moorish strongholds were taken by the Christians at Granada. This is uh, what the, uh, the Spaniards dance when they vanquish the Moors from Spain. And they, they dance this as a Thanksgiving. And the, when the Spaniards came into New Mexico, the Padres brought this dance with them. And it's been danced the same way as they danced it in Spain. So it hasn't changed. But then it goes even back further, it goes back to where the Aztecs had several dances similar to what we have. Masks are the, uh, those are the, uh, the, what do you call it? The soldiers' uh, helmets that the, you know, the soldiers went to, to war, the helmets as a Spanish dance, you know, they were doing it. And the, uh, the color that they, that they used, the ribbons, if you remember in school, let's say they said that when the soldiers went to war, they, they, they wore a colored ribbon to remind them of their loved ones at home. See, but the picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe that we wear on our backs is the same emblem, like uh, they would say that uh, the Spaniards too, we've adopted uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, our emblems. Now we take it up to the bit to the to the spring to have it less. The the spring is a necessity for the villages, the only water they have. One thing that plays an important part with this water is, is the blessing. As uh, most of us were brought up Catholic, uh, one thing we always did was we blessed that uh, we'd always keep the precious water. As a vessel filled with water, we were filled with grace. We especially thank God for his blessings of water, because as all living things, we need water. We need pure, fresh water. You always see people that actually get choked up and, uh, and are also very happy and willing to be part of the dancers that have to go and bless the, the, the water. May we be reminded of God's abundance of our blessings when we look upon this water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us bear our need for clean, 
pure water. Once the stream dried up, the villagers prayed to St. Anthony. Just as they were packing up to head to Albuquerque, the stream started up again. Many tests are done with this water through the federal government. At one time it was tested uh, for quality and possibly ranked uh, within 10 of the best water in the United States. Right now we have many classes that come up here and study the water. They study it for what actually is found in the water as far as uh, insects. Many of these insects that they do find are very sensitive and uh, require living in in just a high grade of water. We test for macrobenthic invertebrates, which are the aquatic insects that live in the stream and that are indicators of health. We have found that there are a lot of animals that live there that are sensitive to pollution, and so that tells us that uh, we have pretty clean water. We also do chemistry. We look at nitrates and phosphates and um, phosphorus. We look at pH and turbidity and a whole ramification of different things that tell us about the water quality as well. And uh, we have seen so far that the water is pretty clean. Uh, we have quite a few families that drink the water, including myself. Many, many foods seem to even taste better with just the cooking of this water. The kitchens of San Antonio had running water in an era before indoor plumbing was common. Pablo Crespin piped spring water into his kitchen during the 1860s and the 1870s. No matter how pristine it is, it still uh, supports lots of life. You have animals that have their food, shelter, and water all in one spot. Uh, bears are very common. The people here have learned to live with a bear, as we have from, for hundreds of years. So we've lived up here along the Ojo, the Ojo Grande for 26 years, and we just love living here. We have so much wildlife. We have everything that comes through, bears, mountain lions, you name it. We have turkey. Uh, raccoons. We have ringtail cats. We have uh, occasional elk that come down from the high country. Uh, it's also a, a birding hot spot. It's just a wonderful place to live. I love this area of the stream because it's cascading down, and we can hear it, we can hear it from our uh, at night, when we're in bed, we can hear the stream. And, uh, you know, water is just such a blessing in New Mexico. And uh, so we, we feel really fortunate, and we do our best to protect it. But, uh, we actually have three forest types at Ojito. We have a pinon juniper forest, which is the most predominant. We also, because of those acequias, those streams, have an, a riparian area. And then what makes this property very unique, aside from the water aspect, is that there's an old orchard there as well that provides lots of apples, and so we have an orchard forest area. This was also our, our medicine chest. A lot of these plants that you see along the sequia were used for uh, medicinal purposes, and we still use them to this day. So we really look at this piece of land as a, a treasure for us. This scarf, this is, this is, symbolizes the four directions. It's a prayer to give thanks, like, um, to the, to the south, to the east, to the west, and to the north. The east represents the sunrise, the west, rain, the north is our ancestors, and the south is our friends. This is an old tradition of, with a sumador. And I've got copal and sage. Um, I do limpias with my sumador. And I feel like I'm the facilitator and God's the healer. So I've been doing it for about 20 years. And I work with some herbs also in the healing part. For the massage, I use arnica, which is good for muscle pain. If somebody has a cough or a cold, I use osha, and I make a cough syrup and a tincture out of it. I use more the herbs in, in ceremony. Like I use sweet grass, I use 
use uh, sage, I'll use copal. We start in the direction of the east, where the sun rises at the break of dawn. From the east, we are given the gift of illumination. Uh, my grandmother on my dad's side, uh, she was Navajo, and um, I grew I grew up with her, so uh, I would follow some of her traditions because uh, I want to keep her in my heart too, all my ancestors. My, my aunt, uh, Timantia Crucita, um, she was a curandera there in Cuba, New Mexico. And as a child, I would go to her house and visit her. And they just shared herbs with each other and, and just the happiness of life. I, I'd call them true curanderas because they, um, their homes were very simplified. They did everything uh, themselves. Um, they went out and they picked their own herbs and, and they uh, did their own remedies. And they were took their time. They were not in a hurry. They didn't have to be in a hurry for anything. Usually the history of a curandera is people came to their house and uh, get a a remedy or a healing is done, and the curandera would get paid either with uh, chicken or beans or something like that. Nowadays it's a little different. Uh, I'm like the traveling curandera sometimes because I go from place to place, or uh, I do have a place up here in the mountains where I live on, on, uh, on La Madera that people come up there, and then I have another place in Albuquerque that I do my work. Uh, but it's not as simple as the old-fashioned food and data. Here, when I was blessing the water, and the sequia here, I was praying for, for it to stay as beautiful as it is. Uh, minds are very silent. Uh, um, words are sometimes not even coming out of my mouth, but in, they're in my spirit. It's, it's mostly my spirit that's in, in, in the meditation of what I'm doing. <laughs>